Everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP buzz chat with another brand new MVP. Hey, Don, how's it going? It's going great. It's kind so of, uh, kind of people, busy right now, just trying to keep up with everything. Of course. Well, that get used to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. Well, we we work in the modern workplace space, the ecosystem. That's that's kind of the story now. It's it's constantly trying to keep up with what's going on. But for folks that don't know you, who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you give us that intro? Sure. Uh, I'm Don Kirkham. I currently work for uh, GM Financial, which is the captive financial arm for General Motors, is my full-time position. I also have a small consulting company where I do side work and just about everything. Um, I was brought on to GMF to uh, basically lead their Office 365 effort uh, that we were just getting started at that point. So getting everything set up and then we're just now starting to do the major migrations. And uh, so that's, so I'm kind of my self-title is I'm, I'm the lead collaboration architect. So we're just trying to put everything together. Um, but uh, I've just, been doing, just getting ready. We'll just, we need to take a snapshot of your face now, just yeah. before the migration <laughs> start and see. Yeah. Fortunately, it looks like we're going to be hiring some third parties to try and help us do that. We'll set it all up and they'll kind of take care of the bulk of it. So that, that'll be great. I would like that. Yeah. So having done some migrations in the past, uh, I'll hand off anything anyone wants to take. So. Well, that's what, so we were uh, hanging out last fall and I'm trying to remember the month of it uh, for the, the North American Collab Summit. September. Uh, was it September? In September. It's yeah. all, all a blur. So I know that was yes. uh, those that, yes, we did an in-person event. Uh, it was a hybrid event, which was right. like my first time doing that. And and the online portion of it went really well. Um, got some so great too. feedback. Um, but uh, yeah, so it'll be good to see. I know that event is coming back and uh, I'm I'm speaking at it again. Uh, um, I am too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see you there. But uh, kind of what are, what are your topics? What are your passions right now? So, um, so I'm an MVP in office development, and that's a great title for what, for what I really love. So... I've been doing uh, development since college. I took, uh, I was a comp sci major, but I took a little uh, 20 year break to go do something else in the Air Force, uh, which is fly airplanes, which is why you see a lot of plane stuff. And, uh, but came back into the IT world and have just really been concentrating on the SharePoint Azure uh, development experience, uh, especially for new developers, just trying to get people excited about it. You know, it's. It, the model has changed again. I think this model is going to stick around for a while, but um, just trying to—it's—it's it's different. It's completely different than all the previous models we've used. So, uh, just get them excited about doing that. So, I so it. I have to put my my um, fake journalist hat on here and say, it's like, okay. So, Don, tell me, how has it changed? In you, know, in what way? Why don't you expand on that? Sure. Well, I mean, when I started doing SharePoint. Um, 2006 or so, somewhere around there. So uh, Moss 2007 was just coming out at that yep. point. And so most of your SharePoint development was all done where by putting code, compiled code into the server. And so you were running your code on the SharePoint servers. Well, once we started moving to the online model, that doesn't work. Microsoft's certainly not going to let us put our code on their servers. So th- we've changed from this uh, code on the server model to this completely disconnected model where um, you build everything in the client, whether that's a, you know a Blazor app or a web app or SharePoint, and then you connect to SharePoint using the APIs. And the APIs have really gotten good. The REST APIs and, and there's the Azure API. There's a lot of different APIs you can go through. The graph is 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 really awesome right now. And uh, and then you just interact with SharePoint that way. So if you need to push data, you need to pull data, permissions, whatever you need to do, it's all done remotely and it keeps us from messing up too much what's going on in, in the Microsoft cloud. It, it is interesting you look at the evolution of that. I mean, that it came with 2010 with sandbox solutions. It was right. like really moving this direction. And I think, you know, I, we have to give, you know, a shout out kudos to a bunch of former MVPs that joined Microsoft that really helped. And I'm thinking like of people like Jeremy Thake that really Absolutely. helped the development of the APIs and, and imp- improve the development experience, um, certainly within SharePoint. 
Absolutely. And uh, so, so, but the, but the change, the, the tool chain to do development, SharePoint framework development specifically is completely different. And it's kind of foreign to anyone who's been like a .NET developer for most of their career. And so, uh, so I love just, just bringing people on, showing them that even though it looks really complex, it's really not. It's a lot of the complexity is, is built around the tool chain, just how to run the tools, but the code itself is actually pretty simple. It deploys pretty simply in, in, you know, you can get up and spinning in, in an hour easily. Yeah. Well, I know that, uh, so you're very involved in the whole, the, the PNP um, community? Absolutely. Absolutely. I absolutely love PNP. So AKA MS slash M365 PNP for anyone who's looking for a place to go. That's a great place to start for anyone that's looking, especially in the dev space, but there's, a, there's more than just developers over there. there the yeah. power platform is obviously growing very much. There's a whole thing about search, the, Azure, the uh, Microsoft uh, 365 CLI, uh, that's that's come out. Uh, so it's you know, you, you know, um, PowerShell up until recently was always just a Windows thing. Now they've got uh, you can run it on Linux and stuff like. But the CLI was basically written to be run on any operating system, and do kind of the same things you can do in PowerShell. So all of that is over there. They've got teams that are working on it. There's a team called Sharing is Caring, which is all about getting started. Which again, that's my passion, and so I'm really hoping to be able to participate more with them, and. And then just whatever other teams that I can I can kind of plug into and, and show that. But uh, if anyone's not familiar with that, patterns and practices PNP is it's it's managed by Microsoft, but it's basically some Microsoft employees and a, a bunch of MVPs, and then anybody else in the community that wants to join in, all together working on this open source code to make make things better. I think so. I it, see it like uh, like all the like the, they take the group photo kind of every every time they they yeah. get together and the most recent one i think you know and vesa sent it out and i think he said it was something like 330 people or something like that were participating just in that call right they have different calls there's multiple calls sure. a week they're talking about simplifying that into maybe just two types of calls every week and uh um, but yeah, we always do the group picture and only the first 50 people in there. So you gotta be really quick to get your camera on if you want to be in the yeah. group picture. <laughs> but <laughs> and, that's, uh, you just made a great point of what we were talking about um, before and before we got started talking about, you know, like keeping up with things and Microsoft, you know, and obviously the level of interest in increases. It's, it's difficult to participate in a community call of that size and, and, and have people, you know, raising hands, asking questions, the, the, it, it's a full-time job following along the chat that's happening on the side Absolutely. of the calls, yep. you know, and with all that going on and to, uh, one of the, the difficulties, and even for my role, so I'm not a developer, I, I haven't participated in the PNP, um, although I need to, because for the, for the reason that there are then things that are discussed and opportunities for partners than what I'm focused on, uh, for developers, for non-developers, you hear about the things through these these channels, through these sessions, uh, and then suddenly there'll be you know a net new group over here that's focused on this other thing. And, and if you weren't on that PMP call, you'd be like, hey, what is that thing? How did I not hear about this? It's so right. easy to get to, to miss some of that activity. Um, What's nice is that they're all recorded, and so you can go back and watch them. Because uh, you know, a lot of times I, I just don't have time to go do it live, and so I'll have to go back and, and record them or uh, watch the recordings. But um, but they're always good. And, and like you're saying, there's a lot of developer stuff. Um, but there's a specific meeting, and again, if they change these, I don't know what it's going to end up being titled. But what Vessel was talking about this morning was one of the meetings per week would be um, not necessarily. PNP developer, JavaScript developer, that kind of focus. It would be more, I think, Microsoft people presenting things like we just had a presentation last week on, on the new Viva, you know, and Naomi Moneypenny came in and showed yeah. us a whole bunch of stuff. So we get a fair That was the one that demos. I missed. Yeah, that was the yeah, one but, that I missed that I saw that. Yeah. Like, dang it, you know? Yeah, right. go back and watch it because it was really good. But you get a lot of the Microsoft people coming in and demoing things that are, that are you know, newly released and trying to explain that kind of stuff. So it's not all, all a dev stuff, but if you go to that, uh, PNP link, then you'll, you know, you can filter through and find the stuff that's, uh, that would be applicable for you. We'll have to, I'll, I'll definitely in the blog post include a link out to, uh, what would you say for, so some, somebody that's brand new to this, you, you said that there, there are resources specifically for people that are new? You or? can, you can do the aka.ms slash sharing dash is dash caring. Uh, but if you just go to the M365 PNP link, the AKA link, uh, all of that's on there, all the sharing and carrying. And you can get to everything else from that one link. 
I'll do the hard work and go and find the links and put it in the blog post. Right. <laughs> but sure. yeah, cause that's always great. Cause that is, uh, you know, whether or not you're, uh, you know, a, a, uh, you know, uh, experienced developer on, on this. And so it's to go and pick it up to, to have those, that list of the various resources that you can then share out with others in your organization as well. Obviously that is very helpful. So, well, that, that that's cool stuff. Well, so what's your, uh, what's your session going to be on? Or do you have multiple sessions for the collab summit? I know it's still a couple months away, but yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do the uh, all-day workshop, uh, probably with some help from uh, Rob Windsor on, on SharePoint development, FP, uh, SharePoint framework development, where we go from, and it's someone, it's similar to the one I did last year. So you start from a clean machine, you know, install all the tools you need, spin up that first project. And then as the day goes on, we get more and more involved in the different pieces on how to talk to SharePoint or how to talk to a, a non-Microsoft API or, you know, different things like that. Uh, so it's a full day workshop. And then I've got um, two other workshops. Uh, one is kind of the first hour of, the, of or not a workshop, a session. One's kind of the first hour of the workshop, which is kind of the same thing, how to get your, your development environment set up. Yep. And then I've got another session. I'm trying to remember which one he picked. I, I have a session on uh, code spaces, which that's kind of the new thing in, in SharePoint development or in any kind of development is being able to develop on a machine that's not necessarily your machine because it's really hard to keep your machine uh, configured correctly. Even with the SharePoint framework, there's multiple versions of Node depending on what version of the framework you're using and there's all these dependencies. So being able to spin up um, in Docker, uh, desktop Docker or in code spaces, which is in the cloud, a virtual machine that has all the tools loaded for you. And so within, you know, you just pointed a repo and within about two minutes, you're ready to rock and roll uh, and, and start working with that repo. Do you have content on that stuff that's out there now? I mean, because that's that's a, another you know things that I you know besides obviously you know we want to drive people to go to this conference that you and I are both sure. going to be presenting at. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, do you have content like that out there now? Uh, I I'm trying to remember what blog post I've done. I do have a, a blog post on Visual Studio Code Spaces, which was the first version of Code Spaces. Mm -hmm. um, that's been deprecated and now it's moved over to GitHub, and I'm working on a blog post on that. It's very similar. Uh, uh, some things I like about it, some things I, I think we lost uh, when we lost Visual Studio, but, um, and then I have several blog posts on my, on my blog um, that are around that beginning developer experience and how to set up your toolkit and stuff like that. Well, now that you've achieved this, uh, this major uh, you know, achievement within your career of becoming an MVP, and I, again, congratulations on that. It's, it, it's always exciting when people that I know, friends from the community, get, you know, earn their MVP, and we could have a whole other conversation on like that, that process, the path into that. Well, what, why don't you, what was your path? What would you say? What was your recommendation? Because sure. I'm sure that when you become a new MVP and then people come out of the woodwork asking like, what did you do? What do you recommend? I've been thinking about this for a while. So kind of what was your pathway? Well, so I, I got involved with my first MVPs I met again after I retired from the military. I went into IT. Within a couple of years, I got introduced to SharePoint. And so I went to some SharePoint training. And from there, I learned about community. I learned about user groups. And so I started going to the local user group where I met my first MVPs, you know, uh, Eric Sheps was probably the first one I met, you know, and so over the years, you know, working with them through the user group and getting to be friends with them, honestly, you know, it's something I determined pretty early that it's like, wow, that'd be great. I'd love to be, you know, a member of that. But what I saw was people that were one, they were technical experts in their field. And then two, they had this passion for, for sharing that with other people. And uh, it's something that I've always had, even in my military career, I was an instructor for most of it. And so I, I love teaching, I love um, sharing what I know, even though sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm way behind other people, but still, you know, somebody can always learn from, from your experiences. So I started doing that. And then probably around 2012, 2013, I kind of started wanting to speak. And so I started speaking to some, you know, like user groups or some small conferences. Uh, and then just kind of working my way up from there and doing more and more community stuff, starting my blog. Um, the PNP program has been a huge part because I've been able to contribute to that, both sample projects and, and, you know, be involved with some of that. So that those nice bullets on my MVP application is, is part of the community effort there. Um, and so, yeah, so it's been almost 15 years uh, of doing this. And I know a lot of people do it a lot less, but you know, actually, you know, I, with Eric as an advisor, he was always like, yeah, you just need to do a little more. You need to do a little more. So he's always pushing me to do more in the community and to share more. Yeah. And, uh, so, well, that's, yeah. I think that's a consistent trait of MVPs is that you find 
the vast majority, like we, we'd still be doing what we're doing, even without the, you know, the MVP title to it, but it, it really comes down to, it. I know one of the, one of the uh, more difficult things for people that are thinking about it is saying, well, look, I'm not that kind of expert. I've not written a book. I'm not leading even, you know, a full day workshop or, you know, multi-day workshops around, uh, you know, a topic. I, I provide some training and guidance. I'm part of my local user group. But what, like, what can I go and present on? And and I always guide my my recommendation is like, well, write about what you know. It doesn't mean you're like the expert on that, all things around that. But share here's how I here's the business problem. Here's the solution that I went and built. And a lot of times, if nothing more, to get dialogue, somebody get you know uh, MVPs like yourself could reach out and say, hey, did you take a look at this? You can actually improve on this, improve your solution. But being that kind of that interactive, being uh, open, and accessible, and sharing of the problems that you're solving, ask the questions and leave them hanging out there for the community. Of, sure. I don't know the answer to this one. I've researched on there. If you know, let me know. What have you done to solve this? How would you have approached this? And but that raises the visibility of that the the activity. And so right there, yeah, there's a people, lot of I mean, MVPs. I uh, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say I started. I started a blog. I mean, one I wanted to because I, you know, I knew it was part of you know something that I knew the MVP program looked at. But I'm not writing on anything I'm an expert on. I'm just writing basically down things so I remember them. And that's uh, so many people I know of that are right. like, no, I just blog about stuff. So when I come on about this another two years from now, I go, oh wait a minute, I think I did a blog on that. And I can go back and figure right. out what, how I solved it last time. And so it just kind of. So most of my blog posts are really kind of what problem did I solve this week? You know, and how did I right. do it? Well, I, I'm, so I'm a big believer in the whole, the working out loud model. I mean, whether you buy into the social collaboration, you know, side of, of things or not. I mean, reality is that in the Microsoft ecosystem, we're all using Teams for the most part. So Teams and SharePoint that are kind of our, our uh, you know, bread and butter platforms around that, that we're used to doing that. But that's how you, uh, uh, that, that, that's collaborating with other people. I mean, that's how you refine and optimize and learn, learn from you know, mistakes or build on something that was done really well and become even better or just get the, uh, you know, confirmation that you didn't screw something up, you know, yeah, sometimes, absolutely. but just sharing that out there. And even if you make mistakes and, and, uh, you know, in how you solve the problem to find out more and learn from that. And, and that helps other people. It helps them to, I know it, it's kind of a service minded, you know, people, I, I honestly, when sometimes where I don't feel, you know, good, but like I've not felt productive today. If I can go and do service for somebody, I mean, I feel fantastic. Sure. And a yeah. lot of what we do in community is just that, you know, like go and find opportunities to provide service for other people. It, I don't have to get value for me personally out of something for me to, to, to help others. I don't, it doesn't have to right. be a two way every time. Um, but you know, you can't help, but you benefit personally just from helping others solve those problems. So. Absolutely. And I, that was one of the things that, that um, when I did the application for the MVP that kind of shocked me, there's, there's a question on there that effectively is okay. So great. You're technical, you, you share your technical expertise, whatever, what do you give to the rest of your community? So your non technical community. So they wanted to know about, you know, are you involved in a church Are you involved in, you know, some sort of social organization, you know, local kind of thing. And, uh, and so it, it kind of drives home the fact that Microsoft is interested in those things and they want their people to be those kinds of people, not just, you know, uh, you know, the, the technical uh, whizzes, uh, you know, to beat the PNP drum, that sharing is caring section. Um, there's, there's, they've started things like the buddy program. So if, if you're kind of struggling with something, you know, we can pair you up with someone, right. either one of us or, or someone else that wants to do this and work through either code problems or uh, today on the meeting, the, the three demos that were presented were all by first time presenters. So they help you work through if you want to be a presenter, you know, but you're a little scared, we'll, you know, we'll either help you with that. In fact, today, one of them was a buddy. So uh, David Warner, who's in charge of the Sharing is Caring program, he co-presented with the, the developer that was presenting her solution uh, to just help her through that. And it went really, really well. And yeah, that's, so that's awesome. Stuff. Well, it's great it, stuff. It, it's, uh, you know, you could tell a lot about uh, you having 
uh, put on a number of you know dozens of SharePoint Saturday events all across the Western U.S. and and spoken at events around the world. One of the things for me, especially for somebody that are that are new speakers um, or that that come saying, "Hey, I'm really interested in becoming an MVP," I almost kind of you know, like observe them participating in an event like that. And are they, do they go and do their session and then they go back to their room and they're hiding out for the, and, and I understand if they're not hiding out, but they're going back because they've got work calls or right. they're working on finishing the demo for their next session later that afternoon, like that. Well, we've all been there. <laughs> right. But, you know, but, but the people that, that go and, and, uh, and don't, you know, participate in the, you know, you go to an event, especially when you're, you know, out of state or out of your city and go to an event and then don't participate in the community activities around that. And, and I'll be honest, I mean, you're less likely if I'm organizing that event to be invited back for that because we want people that will, are fully engaged. Then there's like the collab summit last year where I'm just like, man, can't get rid of this Don guy. He's just, you know, hanging around the conversation. It's like, it's like one of these, it's not me, it's like, I need to go to sleep, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, I think what you find out in, in SharePoint Saturdays are awesome. I, I feel they've calmed down a lot on there's not doing near as many of them here, at least in the States, but yeah, the pan, pan pandemic has kind of put the, yeah. the squash on some of that, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, but even the virtual ones, but those yeah. are, those are great places to get started because it's, it's mostly local people. It's usually, they're usually small. Some of them are pretty big, but yeah. um, if, so if you want to get your feet wet and, and, and kind of do that and what, what you find in that is that, how welcoming the committed the community is not only the people you're presenting to but your fellow speakers and, and the organizers and stuff and and like you said you have these opportunities to just hang out and afterwards and, and learn about each other and you know all that just leads to more opportunities you know and that's honestly that's my biggest excitement about the MVP program is that I know that there will be more opportunities you know a lot of the the bigger conferences if you don't have you know some sort of a little title behind your, your name, like MVP or a MCM or, you know, RD, something like that. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a challenge to get into this. It can be more they have so many, yeah. they yeah. have so many of those that are presenting. It's like, so if you're the, if you're the person picking the content going, I can have this MVP that spoke it, you know, he, I know what a great expert he is in this technical field. I'm going to select, I'm going to select him. I just am, you know, so, so I'm, I'm excited about, you know, more opportunities, especially speaking opportunities, conferences, you know, as hopefully in the latter half of this year, we start to see more in-person stuff. Um, we'll see. Well, that's great. And, and for that. people too, uh, the, the, the two other places to go and look at people that are watching that are interested in doing more. And I apologize if you hear my little dog barking out in the background. But, <laughs> um, welcome to the, the new way of working from home. Uh, but is, uh, so one is like, just go out on meetup. And, uh, and so a lot of, Meetups are great. you know, a lot for user groups and other stuff and, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, apply, you know, to, to submit, have some abstracts on hand for things that you're comfortable about talking about and goes and submit that. So I've got titles with, you know, two or three sentences at just a short, very short abstract of what it is, kind of the target user, IT pro, end user, whatever that is, and like level 100, 200, 300, 400 level, um, depending on the, the, the technical content. And then uh, you know, I'll go and I'll submit those uh, you know, once in a while to those different events. Um, and you know, win them all, you don't get selected for those, but for, you know, especially your local user groups and stuff, there's always gonna be those opportunities. You'll find those opportunities. The other place to go and look is uh, like in Facebook, where there's a ton of still the communities around there. There's actually a call for speakers group or a community out there for the the, the ecosystem. I don't know, Don, if you're aware of know. that. I didn't know that. No, I didn't. And so that's all that oh, you you can only and they they it's tightly controlled of what is posted in the format of those postings. It's all call for speakers for now. Almost everything is you know online only events on a variety of topics from around the ecosystem. So you see that kind of stuff and you might end up speaking at, I've done, you know, where I'm, I'm speaking uh, late at night or early, early in the morning in India or in New Zealand or, you know, whatever. So you can find opportunities that way as well. So there's a lot of ops out there with a little bit of footwork to get yourself kind of together, not be afraid to talk. It could be very granular, like when you talked about those beginning topics, like how I solve this problem in this industry. Mm -hmm. And it could be very specific uh, around that and very, you know, demo reliant. Here's what I built. Here's how I went about it. Here's the results of that. 
and then open it up for you know Q and A. That's a great model. That's a you know, it is, and, for a and those again, kind of like the SharePoint Saturdays. They a lot of them tend to be rather, rather small. The first meetup I spoke at was the Leeds Power Platform Group over in the UK, and I I met one of the organizers of that group at uh, Ignite, um, the last in person Ignite, and. Uh, and we got to talking and everything. He's like, well, we run this group, you know, you know, we'll ch chat. And so he called me back and says, what do you want to talk on? And so uh, I think I did code spaces, but it was uh, probably 10 people that were in the meetup that day and, and uh, including a couple of MVPs, which initially made me a little nervous because I, I knew these MVPs and I was like, Ooh, hope I get this right. But they were, they were awesome. They were like, that's amazing. We haven't seen this yet. This is, you know, this is back when Visual Studio code spaces was still pretty new. Yep. And uh and it's led to me, you know, be keeping in touch with them too. So meetups are awesome because yep. again, they're, everybody's just welcoming. If people just, they're, if you're scared because you think you're going to be chastised, that's just you're, happens on Facebook. <laughs> you know? you know, so. I, so I, I have heard, uh, I mean, the, the, so when I, when I started speaking within the SharePoint community, so like at the end of 2009, early 2010 is really when I kind of hit my stride. I, I got my MVP award in January of uh, 2012 so i'm coming up on my 10 year now um it, it and i heard you know horror stories of people like calling out you know during presentations and stuff and and the the only time i've ever had something even close to that and that's not what what it was it was actually richard harbridge so right. if you know those that know richard, know richard. Yep. you know and uh very smart guy and uh, very, uh, no filters to like ask questions and that kind of stuff. And so he wasn't trying to be, uh, uh, you know, a troll in, in the session. Uh, you know, he was just asking other questions and it ended up, we became friends. It was great questions and actually went back and modified my presentation based to cover the, the questions that he had raised. I'm like, yep, so I completely Absolutely. appreciated it. Um, but that's where, that's where you also like make the connections and with those other MVPs that also helps when eventually you get recommended. Cause one of the things that happens is that the MVP leads at Microsoft, they'll reach out to the community. And it's like, does anybody know this Don guy? It's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, he's great. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don, Hey, really appreciate your time today. People want to find out Absolutely. more about you and, and follow you. Like what, what are the best ways to uh, reach you? Sure, you can find me on most of the social media. Facebook, I kind of keep personal, but Twitter, you know, it's just Don Kirkham. I, I've been self-branding forever because I was just lazy to come up with some fancy moniker. So it's just it's just Don Kirkham, um, you know. Uh, so what I say, Twitter. Um, Your blog. I, my blog is donkirkham.com, you know, and um, so, so you go there. LinkedIn, wow. yeah. LinkedIn is is another great place. Uh, I, I monitor that. I've gotten a lot of the, the LinkedIn thing has just blown up since the first yeah. of March when I, when I put a little thing on there about getting MVP. So that's awesome. Um, so that's been great. Uh, so those are probably the the primary ones. You can just email me. It's just Don Kirkham at live dot com. Uh, if you go to my blog post, all that social stuff, all the all the connection stuff is there. So uh, what about your phone number and home ad address? Do we put those out? Uh, I think that's out there somewhere. Yeah, so. sure I'm in is. Texas. That's I'm right. in Texas. You can find me down here in Texas. So it's a small right. place. Well, hey, Don, really appreciate your time today. It's great to connect. And uh, we'll, we'll definitely you'll see you at the Collab Summit. But uh, maybe before then, probably not. I, I think that's going to be like my first in-person. That's like the first one I think that's that I've got on my schedule that's going to be an in-person thing. Yeah. So, so, well, cool. Very cool. Well, it's great talking to you. Great talking to you, Christian. Take care.